Hi, this is Clint Macker from the Trigger Pressers Union. Welcome to Trigger Presser Tuesday. This is a short little video on the body snatch reaction, presentation from the holster, and some suggestions for you to use if you choose to practice this at home with a dry gun. So first and foremost, we have to recognize as a law-abiding citizen, if we are to keep our eyes open, and uh, if we see things that look bad, we avoid, you know, we, if we have conflict avoidance and situational awareness. If I'm at a point in time in life where I need to use my handgun, then it's a fair assumption that it's gonna be a surprise or potentially that ambush situation. So because of that, I like to incorporate the body's natural reaction of a startle into my training. Now, there's no guarantee that says you're gonna have a startle, but we wanna train for that worst case scenario when we're in the most amount of danger and have the least amount of control. It's likely if you have been startled by some type of stimulus, you're gonna lower your center of gravity, and what that does is it puts you in kind of a defensive crouch. And when that happens, if you think biomechanically, if I lower my center of gravity, my hands are gonna end up somewhere in front of the belt line. I might scrunch my shoulders up. Someone screams, I might do this, but where do my hands go? somewhere in front of my belt line. You may actually orient yourself towards that potential threat, that stimulus, and put your hands protectively between your face core and that stimulus. So when we go through presentation from the holster in the classes, the USCCA DSF classes and the ICE training courses, we give people a react command. This allows people to simulate that body's natural reaction of getting the hands protectively somewhere in front of the the body, face, core, or in front of the, the belt line. So we react, then we grip. So we wanna grip our pistol. Now, here's a little bit of a difference. When you are carrying appendix like this, when we grip the pistol, we wanna open at the hips. So this would be open, this would be closed at the hips. Now, the reason for that is, ultimately, as we go through the training, as soon as we recognize a threat, we wanna move laterally from that threat in whatever direction, you know, 90 degrees off of the, off of the uh, threat. But we don't know what direction to go until we've recognized that threat. So once we recognize the threat, we're gonna go for that gun and then we're gonna move laterally whatever direction. So by opening at the hips, this kind of simulates that because if I were to turn and move that way, my hips would, would open. If I were to turn and move that way, my hips would open. So we wanna make sure we open at the hips with the uh, appendix draw. So react grip we want to get a good solid grip on the gun now depending on how your holster is set up depending on your body shape and all of that kind of stuff you might be able to get your thumb down completely around the grip or something that i like to do is to get my thumb over the top of the slide and then when i bring the gun out of the holster i can pop my thumb back in place across the grip itself and it allows for a consistent grip each time so i'll give you the next steps so react grip then we want to lift or pull the gun clear of the holster. We want to make sure we get that gun clear of the holster. Uh, very important. Now here, let me go ahead and put the gun back into the holster. I'm going to carefully watch it go back into the holster. Very carefully to be sure to keep my finger off of that trigger. Now let me move this gun and put it into uh, like a four o'clock position. So over here it would be react and then grip. I would lift or pull the gun, clear the holster. Now, as you see, it's not pointed at my leg. It's pointed just in front of my leg. So while we're doing this, we're always keeping the gun pointed in a generally safe direction. And that also includes not pointing it at ourselves. So I brought the gun up. Now, from a four or five o'clock uh, strong side hip kind of arrangement, you can bring the gun up and many people will feel a biomechanical stop. Now, this may not be the case with everyone, but a lot of people will find a place where they just can't get their arm up any further if they are keeping the back side of their hand against their body. So we're bringing the gun up, keeping it close to our body, but not pointed at our leg at our foot. So let me demonstrate that again. Now here, I'm gonna watch the gun and slowly and carefully watch it go back into the holster, keeping my fingers clear of the trigger. So react, grip, lift or pull the gun clear of the holster now we're going to 
orient towards a threat. When we orient, you want to make sure that you keep the, the gun close to the body. The strong side or the trigger thumb, you want that to be between the gun and your body. So kind of against my breast here. I've got the, the uh, uh, magazine dug into my ribs. So here, actually, in further training down the road, when we get outside of the probable and more into the plausible, this would be a retention shooting position. So why learn two different skills when the same skill set can cover two different things? So uh, this particular draw stroke that we teach will also satisfy that need too as you move further into your training. Now, let me go through that again from the appendix. So let me slowly and carefully watch the gun go back into the holster. Now let me move it over the appendix. Now here with the appendix, we'll react, grip, opening up at the hips. We're gonna lift or pull the gun clear of the holster. Gotta get it perfectly clear of that holster. Now when I orient, I'm going to level the gun perpendicular to the ground, or parallel to the ground rather. As I extend through my ready position is when I'm going to corkscrew and get a two-handed grip onto the firearm. Once I get to full extension and get into my extended shooting position, I'll touch trigger and then press. Reset the trigger, reassess, finger off the trigger, come back to my high compressed ready position and I'll assess my surroundings. Once I have visualized that the world is a safer place or in real life I know it's a safer place, then I'll slowly and carefully watch the gun go back into the holster. So I'll clear whatever clothing is in the way, I'll look at the holster, and from appendix I'll just do everything in reverse. So here to here and then back down. And this allows us to handle the gun, keeping it pointed in a generally safe direction whenever possible. So let me go back to the strong side hip, and we'll do the same thing. So react, grip, pull or lift the gun clear of the holster, orient towards the target, extend through the ready position, touch and press. Reset. Assess, finger off of the trigger, come back to the high compressed ready position and we're going to assess our surroundings. And everything looks cool. I visualize the world as a safer place. Now I will slowly and carefully watch the gun go back into the holster. Making sure that my finger is nowhere near that trigger when the gun goes back in the holster. Now with striker fired guns or any gun for that matter, be very, very careful that there's no clothing in the way of the holster because if there, the shirt got into the holster when I put the gun in, it could potentially disengage the trigger safety and when you push down on it, you might have a very bad problem that, that occurs. So when reholstering, it's my recommendation that you reholster reluctantly and slowly and watch the gun go back into the holster. If it's still an active if there's still like active bad guys out there trying to harm you, well, you're not going to be putting the gun away. Uh, we want to make sure that it's a safer world before we go ahead and put that gun away. Also consider physically under stress, heart rates up, we're most likely going to be shaking to a large degree because of that adrenaline dump. And so we want to set ourselves up for success. It would be pretty tragic to defend yourself and your family with a firearm and then accidentally shoot yourself with a gun when you were putting the gun back into the holster. So we want to make sure we slowly and carefully watch the gun go back into the holster. Now a few other things to consider. Uh, if you have a firearm that has a, a, an external thumb safety on it, well, where do you take that safety off? Well, there's a lot of, that's kind of situationally dependent, but I think everyone would agree would be once you are oriented and the gun is pointing towards that threat that you've already positively identified and the gun is perpend or parallel to the ground, excuse me, here, anywhere from here all the way out through full extension when you get your two-handed grip, I think anywhere in between there would be an acceptable place to take that safety off. But keep in mind, when we bring the gun back to the high compress ready position, we need to put that gun back into the same condition that it would be if it were in the holster. So if I've got a complex gun like a DASA, I would bring it back, I would go ahead and decock while I was assessing, and then if it had an external thumb safety, I would put that thumb safety on as well. If you have a 1911 or something with an external thumb safety, after I fire and I've identified that the target has gone down, 
Our only stimulus to tell us to stop shooting is when the threat is no longer a threat. When that occurs, I bring the gun back, I'm assessing, and I get that safety put back on as I return to my high compressed ready position. When you're practicing, what do you do with the support hand while you're going for the gun? Well, quite frankly, most people are going to be using that support hand to clear the garment, the cover garment, whatever that is. Uh, there's a, a big school of thought that says you should take the hand and put it against your chest. Uh, you know, if you think about it contextually, maybe you're covering your face. Uh, quite frankly, if my son or my wife were with me, I would probably be grabbing hold of them and pulling them behind my body. So what I think you should do is not get your head wrapped around the weeds on doing the exact same thing every time with this support hand. You know, if you're clearing a garment, cool. Maybe put your hand protectively in front of your face, cool. Maybe put your hand back behind your body like you're holding on to a, a child or a loved one. But try to mix that up and not get into the same uh, rut or same repetitions of doing the same thing. The one thing I would definitely say in regards to that, don't put your hand out here where you're going to flag it with the gun. We always want to keep that gun pointed in a generally safe direction and having your hand in front of a gun is not a generally safe direction and is setting you up for a potential fail. So I will clear the gun out here. So I'm going to bring it to my high compressed ready position. I'll drop the magazine and I'll lock it open. I'll just visually and physically check the chamber and magazine area. Hey, Augie, come here and just double check me, buddy. Whenever possible, have someone do a secondary verification. Do you agree that gun is clear? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, bud. All right. So for the purpose of this, I want to talk about dry fire in the home or dry practice in the home. Uh, I think it's definitely best to practice as in context as possible. So try to get on the range and get some lead down range. This allows us to, to uh, practice with recoil management and get some slide lock stimulus that will ultimately help us to be able to recognize what we need to reload without having to look at the gun and figure that out. We'll be able to feel that. But right now, many people in many places don't have range access. So this is something that you can practice at home. Now there's some safety protocols that need to be in place. First, you need to make absolutely clear that your gun is clear and has no ammunition in it, that the gun is empty. You want to make sure there's no ammunition in your dry practice area. That's very important. Also, just as, a, as, as an extra safety, you want to make sure that whatever wall you are dry practicing against, it's actually a good ballistic wall that if you did make a mistake and the gun went bang, there would be no other consequence as opposed to like fixing drywall or getting in trouble from your wife. So we want to make sure that there's a good wall. If you have a basement that you're underground, uh, that would be great or, or fireplaces quite often are used. We want to make sure that's a good ballistic backstop. So make sure the gun is clear, purge the room of ammunition, make sure there's absolutely no ammunition in the area. So here we are. So I can react, grip, lift or pull the gun out of the holster orient, extend through the ready position, touch trigger, and press. All right, come back to my high compressed ready position. Now let's add one more layer to this. A lot of people that dry fire get into the habit of administratively resetting their trigger when they're using a Glock or some type of striker fired gun. Now ultimately in training, we want to learn that as a stimulus. Dead trigger means tap rack. We wanna, we wanna clear that malfunction by reseating the magazine and cycling the action. So I would recommend when you're dry firing with a striker gun, incorporate that into the training too. So you're programming your brain to do a tap rack whenever you feel that dead trigger click. So I'll go ahead, assess, and slowly and carefully put the gun back into the holster. So I'll try that one more time. So react, grip, lift or pull the gun clear of the holster, orient, extend through the ready position, touch trigger and press. Click, dead trigger, tap, rack, assess. Slowly and carefully watch the gun go back into the holster. So that's a little bit on presentation from the holster. Again, the commands are react, grip, pull or lift the gun clear of the holster, orient towards the target, extend through the ready position, touch trigger, press, return to the high compressed ready position, Assess your area, make sure there's no other bad guys or no people that you don't want to be harmed by or folks that maybe need help or maybe a position of advantage that you can move to. And then once you visualize the world as a safer place, slowly and carefully watch the gun go back into the holster.
Check out my website, triggerpressersunion.com, for more information, more videos. Uh, you can learn about this type of presentation from the holster, from the uh, USCCA DSF programs, or I teach all of the ICE fundamentals, the entry-level classes through Rob Pincus's company, ICE Training. Also, check out Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and me. Meet the Pressers is a safe place for trigger pressers to congregate and fellowship and talk about training, guns, gear, gadgets, sometimes religion, and political activism. This is Clint Macker with the Trigger Pressers Union. Thanks for your time. Enjoy Trigger Presser Tuesday. Stay healthy, stay armed, and stay well regulated. Cut.